page 14 of complex numbers and polynomials. Number three, find a from the set of real numbers, given that x cubed minus 2x plus a is divided by x minus 2. Uh, when it's divided by x minus 2, the remainder is 7. So this is just another way of saying that p of 2 is equal to 7, right? So let's take our p and we'll substitute in 2 and we'll get 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 plus a equals 7. 8 minus 4 plus a equals 7. 4 plus a equals 7. a equals 3. Okay, so that means that when you divide x cubed minus 2x plus 3 by x minus 2, you will get a remainder of 7. All right, next one, 2x to the n plus ax squared minus 6 leaves a remainder of negative 7 when divided by x minus 1, and 129 when divided by x plus 3. Find a and n given that n is a positive integer. Okay, so this is looks kind of intimidating. This is the polynomial. Uh, when divided by x minus 1, the remainder is negative 7. When divided by x plus 3, and this would be a k of negative 3, then the remainder is 129. So let's that'll create two equations and two unknowns probably. So the first one would be 2x to the n. What are we substituting in for x? We're substituting 1. Ah, I see why this is going to not be so bad. Okay, whenever you take n 1 to the anything, it's going to be 1. So it's actually kind of trivial, right? So there's one of my equations. The other equation is I substitute in negative 3. So negative 3 to the n plus a times negative 3 squared minus 6 equals 129. So we'll work on this one first. It looks easier. So we'll do 2 plus a minus 6 equals negative 7. And we immediately know that a is equal to negative 7 plus 6 minus 2 equals negative 1 minus 2 is a equals negative 3. Um, so we're going to take our a equals negative 3 and we're going to put it here. And so then we'll have 2 times negative 3 to the n plus negative 3 times 9, which is negative 27, minus 6, oops, minus 6, equals 129. Then we're going to add 6 and 27 to both sides and we'll get um, 129 plus 6 is 135. 135 plus 27 is 155 plus 7, 162. So 162, that's equal to 2 times negative 3 to the n. Divide both sides by 2, we get negative 3 to the n equals 81. And um, how many times do you multiply negative 3 times itself to get 81? 4. So n equals 4, a equals negative 3. Number 7, when uh, the polynomial is divided by z plus 1, the remainder is negative 8. And when divided by z minus 3, the remainder is 4. Find the remainder when p of z is divided by uh, both of those. Okay. So let's write out what we want to do here. So we have p of z, it's equal to, um, let's see, if we divide by z plus 1, and we also divide by z minus 3, we get a quotient plus a remainder, OK? And this remainder, uh, in general, whenever you divide a um, when you divide by a quadratic, your remainder is going to be a linear, okay? So this could be rewritten as az plus b. Oh, I'm sorry, and this is also divided by z plus one, z minus three, okay? So this would be z plus one, z minus three. Make sense? So if I divide the polynomial by these two linear factors, 
I get a quotient plus the remainder, which is a linear, divided by the quadratic. Okay, And I can rewrite this as the probability. So I'm going to rewrite it here and multiply everything by z plus 1, z minus 3. So I have the quotient times z plus 1 times z minus 3 is equal to az plus b. Now I know a couple things. I know that if I plug in negative 1 into p, I will get negative 8. And if I plug 3 into p, I will get 4. So I'm going to use this to simplify this expression here. For example, um, p, if I put in p negative 1, then I know that this expression is going to become 0 because if I put negative 1 into there, the whole thing is 0. And then I know that uh, that is equal to negative 8, which is equal to a times negative 1 plus b. And if I put 3 in there, then I would get p of 3 is equal to, and the quotient times z plus 1 times z minus 3 would also become 0 because I put 3 in there. And that is equal to a times 3 plus b, and I know that p of 3 is 4. So basically I have two equations of two unknowns at now. I have negative 8 equals minus a plus b, and I also know that 4 is equal to 3a plus b. So b is equal to 4 minus 3a. So negative 8 equals negative a plus 4 minus 3a, which is equal to 4 minus 4a. So 4 minus 4a equals negative 8. Uh, negative 4a equals negative 12. a equals 3. b equals 4 minus 3a. b equals 4 minus 3 times 3. b equals 4 minus 9 equals negative 5. b equals negative 5. Okay, so our answer is that the remainder is uh, 3a, and this is, remember, the remainder is this here. So we're just going to substitute back in. So it's going to be 3z uh, plus or minus 5. Minus 5 is the remainder. So here at the bottom, we're going to look for look at the factor theorem, which is that for any polynomial, if k is a zero of the polynomial, then x minus k is a factor of the polynomial. And that seems kind of um, intuitive. So it's like, well, if you, if you want to use what you know so far as a proof, then we start out with the fact that k is a zero of the polynomial, which means that if you put k into the polynomial, you get zero. And we also know that the remainder uh, is what you get when you substitute k into the polynomial, which we just said is zero. So the remainder is zero. Then we take, uh, we, like we've done before, where we say that p divided by x minus k is equal to q plus the remainder divided by x minus k. Except in this case, we already know that the remainder is zero. So we know that that is equal to q. So we know that p divided by x minus k is equal to q. And we also know that p equals q times x minus k. And if we know that, then we know that x minus k is a factor of p. x minus k is a factor. And that's exactly what we're trying to prove. That's it.